In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some calculus calculations in MATLAB, so integration, differentiation, and I'm also going to show you how to apply assumptions to your calculations. Uh, you'll see that you need these when your results maybe don't come out so cleanly and you want to help Mathematica make it much more pleasing to the eye or even understandable. Okay, so I'm just going to have a new Mathematica notebook here and I'm going to just uh, put in some text that I prepared. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this cell and I'm going to make it a title cell. I'm going to come to the menu, title. That's not quite the cell I wanted to work in, so I'll paste it there. There's a title, okay. So I'll also put in here a problem statement. And you can see I have the option here of just making it a section cell. Here's some text that I'm pasting in here, but I want it to be a text cell. So I select my cell, go to the menu, text. Uh, it's not an input cell because I don't want to evaluate this immediately. Okay, so here's the idea. This is a quantum mechanics problem in the infinite square well. Here's the potential. If you studied quantum mechanics, you know that these are the stationary states. So these are the eigenstates of the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And then this is the time part of the 1D problem. Here is some information. N is an integer. H bar is a constant. En is real. T and X are real. Uh, time and position variables. Okay, so we're looking for uh, the nth eigenstate or stationary state. We're looking for the expectation value for position x or x squared and then the momentum operator and the momentum operator squared. Uh, first off, I'm going to define an expression for this size. So the nice thing is I'm going to be able to copy and paste. Copy, paste, and I'm going to put in here a, a capital Psi, so escape, and then PSI. I'm going to do a control underscore, and I'm going to put here N. And one other thing I'm going to change from this expression is this EN, I'm going to change to a V. The reason for that is that when I put in a capital E, I believe that Mathematica will interpret that as the exponential, and that's not what I want here. So I'm going to store this expression in psi sub n, and I don't really need to see it, so I'm going to suppress it with a semicolon. Now, let's find the expectation value of position. And I'm just going to make this a section cell. And actually, what I'm going to do is make it even uh, be a subsection cell. Okay, so now I'm going to put in a special symbol. I have my classroom assistant palette here. And if you don't have it showing, you can go up to the menu, palettes, and classroom assistant, and it will bring this palette up. So what I'm going to do is uh, click the angled brackets and then put in an X. And that's my variable, that's my symbol here. And in this symbol, I'm going to put the expression for this expectation value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here definite integral. So escape, d, i, n, t, t. There's my definite integral. Because of the way the potential is defined, we need only integrate from 0 to a. That's the only range where psi is non-zero. And I'll just put here we're integrating over x. And then I'm going to put psi. And to conjugate it, I, I do escape and C-O-N-J, and then escape, and there's the complex conjugate. I add a space so that I can multiply by X, add another space, and multiply again by Psi N. And so that is the expression for the expectation value of X. Now I'm going to hit Return, Shift-Enter on a Mac, and it evaluates it, and I get this expression that's really not very helpful or meaningful I'm going to improve this by 
adding assumptions so that we can strain the problem for Mathematica and make it easier to handle. So the way we do this is we have this expression, but we're going to enclose it in the assuming function. Assuming. And the expression is the second input. And then the first input will be our constraints. So first off, I'll say a is greater than 0. And so let's see what happens there. Maybe not a whole lot. I don't know. It's evaluating. And it didn't quite get better. So I'm going to add more. So to add other constraints or other assumptions, I'm going to enclose this in braces so that we can put in other assumptions. So a is greater than 0. Let's say that uh, vn is greater than 0. And h bar greater than 0. Let's see if that helps us. And it may take a few moments to evaluate. Not so great yet. We'll also add t. We'll say uh, t greater than 0. And we'll also say n is an integer. So the way we do that was hit escape, backslash in. And then I have the is member symbol. And then we'll put here integer. And there's a completion for that. So I hit tab. OK, and those two additional constraints really helped me get a nice input that means something rather than that ugly expression before. Now, it's an easy operation to make the expectation value of x squared. I just copy, paste, and here I'm going to put xsq. Mathematica, I believe, won't like it if I put in the x to the power 2. It'll think I'm trying to evaluate something on the left-hand side, and I think it would prefer that I only do evaluations on the right-hand side. So I do xsq, and then this, uh, I change that x to a x squared, and then shift enter, and there's an expression. Now, sometimes in Mathematica you want to annotate things and make, you know, make things nicer. So I'm just going to annotate this a little bit. I start typing. And uh, I follow the suggestion, convert it to a text cell. OK, so now I have a nicer expression for this. And I'm going to also put this here and turn this cell into a subsection. Oh, let's make it something else. Now we're going to look for the expectation value of the momentum operator. Make this cell a subsection. I'm going to do it the hard way so that I can show you the derivative. So I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to call this p. And then instead of putting the x in here, I'm, I have to put, uh, I'm going to delete x and then the psi sub n. Now I'm going to take my classroom assistant. And I'm going to insert a derivative. And so I'm going to do the single derivative right here, like that. And I put in the subscript an x, because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. And then I put in psi. Also, the uh, momentum operator includes a factor of, the, of negative h bar over i. And to get the i, I do escape i i. And you see that's the. Uh, the tab completion says it's the imaginary number. I'll do that again. Imaginary number, OK. And then a negative sign. And if I hit Shift Enter, let's see what happens. Zero, OK. And this makes sense because the momentum is equal to mass times the time derivative of the expectation value of position. 
which is the same as mass times velocity. Well, the only velocity that we have here is the time derivative of the expectation value of x. Uh, because in quantum mechanics, there is no other velocity than that. OK, and then expectation value for the momentum operator squared. Again, making this a subsection. And I'm going to do a similar thing here, PSQ. And then here I need to square my factor. And then instead of the partial derivative with respect to x, I'm going to make it be, if I'm going to replace the x by these braces and make a list. The list is x, uh, because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, but 2, because I want the second derivative with respect to x. I can evaluate this and I get a nice result. Okay, so just a few other things I'll mention before I conclude this video. There are some other keystrokes I'd just like to point out. To get h bar, you do escape, hb, escape. To get the exponential, escape, E, E, escape. Now to raise the exponential to a power, or anything to a power, I can put A and then control 6, and then it gives me a little place to put an exponential. Imaginary number we mentioned, escape, I, I, escape. Infinity, escape, I, N, F, that'll do it. The member symbol, escape, backslash, I, N, it's that element. There's the integral, definite integral, so escape d i n t t. I have had some challenges sometimes with the integral, the indefinite, if, if it's just i n t t. Uh, I, I would try to do an expression and it wouldn't work out so well, and then I, instead I would do the indefinite integral, and I would put in the minus infinity and plus infinity, and that would give me a better result. Um, so those are just some keystrokes and some tips and tricks there. Hope you found that helpful. Feel free to uh, subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you online sometime.